Hi kids! It's Miss Joy again here behind the mask. Oh boy, it's hard to be patient until we can all get back to doing what we used to be doing, right? But this pandemic time sure gives us some time to think and sometimes to some time to maybe communicate with each other in different ways and, and uh, that sort of a thing. So just know I keep thinking of you and I miss seeing you guys in person, but I'm glad everybody's staying healthy and um, we're just gonna keep on keeping on and we'll see you soon, I hope. Um, today's lesson is about a woman named Lydia. Lydia is her name. I don't know if anybody has an Aunt Lydia or a Grandma Lydia. It's kind of an old-fashioned name these days. We don't hear very many Lydias. But um, I used to have some friends who were called Lydia, and it is a name of a lady in the Bible. After um, Jesus had gone to the cross for us and died and rose again, and uh, spent some time with his disciples and then went back into heaven, the disciples were off trying to tell everybody they could about Jesus and about his love for all of us. And they kind of were having a, a tough time getting people to pay attention to them. And they traveled around and they traveled around and one of the places, well, I should, I'm getting ahead of myself, getting ahead of myself. Um, Paul, the disciple Paul, sometimes we call him Saint Paul, was asleep one night and he had a vision of a man of Macedonia. And we'll talk about where Macedonia is here in a minute. There's some interesting place names. Macedonia. It almost sounds like a dinosaur, doesn't it? There were mastodons, but not in Macedonia at the time that we're talking about. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, he got ready right away to leave for Macedonia, convinced that God had called him to preach the gospel, the good news, gospel is good news, to the people in Macedonia. Okay, so I'm looking at my notes to tell you where Macedonia is these days. Where is Macedonia these days? It's not called that anymore. Humph. Um, well, Asia Minor, but that is not what I think of it. Oh, it's in my notes someplace. We'll discover it sooner or later where that, where Macedonia is. Humph. So, let's read our Bible story about Lydia. And for those of you who have your Spark Bibles, it's almost at the very end. It's on page 532, 532. And it has her name on the top, Lydia. Lydia. And you might notice that the color of Lydia's clothing has something in common with the color I'm wearing today and the color behind me here on our banners or what we call paraments, paraments. Um, and this color is a very important color in Lent. It has a lot of things that we can talk about this color, and I'll, I'll um, talk about it uh, again in just a few minutes, but let's read about Lydia. So here we are, and it says, here's Paul and here's Lydia, okay? Paul traveled to many places,
teaching people about Jesus. One night, God told Paul, go to another country and teach people there. Paul listened to God. He got onto a big boat. Up and down, over the waves, the boat went, sailing to a far away country. Now I'm gonna stop here a minute and say to you guys, I don't know how far you guys have traveled. Um, some of you might have traveled a lot and some of you might not have traveled so much. Some of you might have traveled on a boat to another country um, and that probably felt like a long time if you've done that, if you've gone on a cruise or, or something like that. Um, in Paul's time, this probably didn't take days, it probably took weeks. And I don't think he was on a princess cruise either with um, all sorts of games to play and ways to walk around and all sorts of room and good sleeping at night and a big old buffet. Um, this was probably kind of dangerous. Might have even been risking their lives to go and tell people about how much Jesus loved them. So. You know, good on Paul and the other disciples. They wanted to let people know about Jesus so much that they were just really willing to do very dangerous things. And I'm not suggesting you should put yourself in danger, but we sure want to be thankful for what Paul and the other disciples did because maybe that means that that's today why we know so much about Jesus. So as we continue with the story, when he got there, Paul taught, Jesus loves you. He said, Jesus came to earth to teach us how to live and have saved us all from our sins. An amazing woman named Lydia heard Paul teaching. Unlike many other women of that time, Lydia had her own business. Now, we've talked in the past about some women of the Bible. We talked about how Mary was a mighty girl and, and God asked her to do something that was kind of not really what the culture of the day would have had her do. And she trusted God and she gave birth to Jesus. She said yes to God. Well, Lydia didn't do that, but she must have been quite an amazing woman, like it says here, because men had businesses and women tended to stay home. And it's important to stay home and take care of the house and it's important to take care of the children. Maybe not all women uh, felt like they were cut out for that, and I guess Lydia was one of those women, or maybe, we don't know what happened, like did Lydia have a husband, did Lydia have children, we don't know, but we know that for whatever reason, Lydia was a person who made cloth. And that was just so unusual for women at that time. She sold beautiful, expensive, purple cloth to rich and famous people, to the rich and the famous. Why were they rich and famous? Well, because purple was a color that most of the time royalty wore, and it was very expensive, very expensive, because the items that you use to make purple dye were kind of rare. And so it was just very, very expensive. You and I probably could not have afforded to wear purple back in those days. Only kings and queens and wealthy and famous people could wear purple. And again, when we think about purple, we think about royalty. So, we're gonna talk more about Lydia in a minute, but take a look again here at our purple banner, our purple pyramid. 
and you see it has a cross in it, and it has a crown of thorns in it, right? Now, who has a cross, who had to wear a cross of thorns, and who had to die on a cross? Well, Jesus, right? And these letters here, I-N-R-I, that means Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. Now, hmm, that's what, that's what the people who were killing Jesus said, that he was King of the Jews. And Jesus was a Jew, but he's king of everyone. That's what we know. He's king of everyone and everything. And that's what we know. And so in this season of Lent, when we think about the time that Jesus was preaching and teaching, we think, and ultimately, and, and eventually, he had to be um, put on trial and convicted for saying he was God or the Son of God, which he was, but people were scared of him because they were selfish and silly. And they decided to put him to death on the cross. So that's kind of a different kind of royalty, isn't it? That is a different kind of royalty. Most kings or queens or the rich and the famous, they're not, you know, they get a hangnail and, and it's a big deal. But Jesus, the Son of God, gave up everything for us to be king of our hearts. So when you, when you see purple, please think about that, when you see the color purple. Okay, anyway, back to Lydia. <clears throat> Lydia said to Paul, tell me more about Jesus. I want to learn everything I can about the Son of God. Paul told her about Jesus' teachings. Love everyone, he said. Share with others. And most importantly, he finished, remember that God loves you forever. Lydia was amazed. I want to be one of Jesus' followers, she exclaimed. Will you baptize me and everyone who lives in my house? Now then, I'm gonna put this down again and talk a little tiny bit more about what we know about Lydia. Lots of things we don't know, but some things we do know. And so what we do know is that going back to when Paul and the disciples came to Macedonia, Philippi, actually. It's, I think Macedonia was kind of like a county, like Deschutes County, and Philippi was the city or the town. So when Paul and the others came to Philippi, which is where Lydia lived, there wasn't anybody to greet them. There was no Jewish synagogue or Jewish church for them to connect with. So there wasn't any like group of people waiting for them, at least not an official group. But even though there was no official church or synagogue in Philippi. There was a group of women there who were worshiping together and praying together, wanting to know more about God. And Lydia was in that group of women, in that group of women. And Paul, coming to see Lydia and that group of women, that's another big deal. You probably remember that Jesus connected with women a lot in his ministry. But once again, back in that day, men and women didn't just casually hang out and they didn't teach each other. And again, they usually didn't work together. 
And I bet you that Paul had to kind of wrap his mind and his heart around the idea that women were important too, that everyone is important to Jesus, everyone. Boys are really important, girls are really important, everybody's really important, old, young, big, small, um, tall, thin, um, everybody, everybody, babies, everybody's important to Jesus, everybody. And so Paul sitting down and talking to a group of women was a big deal, but he wanted to do that for Jesus. So um, that's how Lydia got to be baptized and her household and probably the women who were praying with her too. Um, another thing about Lydia, where Lydia came from, there were guilds, guilds they're called. And they're like unions today. I don't know if anybody's mom and dad works for a union, I mean, uh, has a union that helps them in their work. It's, it's a group of people who do the same work, who try to help each other and make the work better and that sort of a thing. And um, in Lydia's time, she did take some risks because the guilds or the unions opposed people who were Christians. They didn't want nothing to do with this Christianity stuff, this Christ stuff. And she could have been kicked out of the union. She might have lost her business for being a worshiper of Jesus and wanting to know more about it. But she was a brave woman. She was a mighty girl. She was a mighty girl, and she worshiped God, and she gathered other mighty girls with her to worship. And so I bet when she found out that she and her household could be baptized, she was over the moon. She was over the moon. So she says to Paul, will you baptize me and everyone who lives in my house? Lydia, Paul, and all of the people who lived in Lydia's house went to the water. They splashed into the cool wetness. Paul baptized each of them. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know if any of you remember this um, yourselves, if you were baptized as a baby, or maybe if you've seen babies baptized, but Pastor Eric or the pastor will say, in the name of the Father, put the sign of the cross, and the Son, the sign of the cross, and the Holy Spirit, like our cross here, right? And so Lydia was just, you can see, if you have your Spark Bible, I'll try to put this up if anybody doesn't have a Spark Bible. Can you see the picture of Lydia and her people in her house getting baptized? That must have been a day, right? Splashing out into the river when it's all hot and into the cool water and getting baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lydia said, thank you. Will you stay at my house with my family? Paul said, sure, and went to stay with Lydia. Now, there's even more than that, really. Not just Paul, but Lydia opened her household, her house, her big house, I bet, to other people who wanted to learn more about God and who wanted to worship God. And she made her house a church. Her house was a church. Um, now, I don't know if it said church or synagogue on the top of her house, but it was a church. It was a church because that's where the believers gathered and the people who wanted to know more. And um, so Lydia used her time and her talents and her possessions to help people learn about Jesus. And it sounds like she had lots of talents and lots of possessions 
and maybe quite a bit of time, although people who have businesses maybe don't have as much time. I don't know. But anyway, she put Jesus first. And the idea that Jesus' good news of his love for us and his wanting to be with us always, that was first in her mind. And that's when we think about Lydia and when we think about her house saying to Paul and the disciples saying, come to my house. And then later inviting more and more people and the people that the disciples were teaching into her house. Again, her house was a church. And maybe that's not so different than what we're experiencing right now in the pandemic. Our houses are churches, and that's a good thing. We have our church building here, and that's wonderful. It lets a lot of people come in. It lets us meet new people. Um, it has maybe instruments that we don't have here, and, or that we don't have at home, and um, maybe it looks a little bit different than our houses, but our houses can be churches too. When we gather with the people in our bubble, and do we say if we listen to um, Virch or our uh, prayer blog, or just if we pray together, or we have Bible study together, or many, many ways to worship Jesus in our homes. And never forget that your house is a church too, can be a church if you make it a church. So the two things maybe are there only two? Well, two important things to keep in mind is you have gifts your own self that you can use to help people know about Jesus. Maybe that's the way you talk. Maybe that's the way you act. Um, maybe later on as you get into business, as you're going back to school, as you have a house of your own, those are things you can use to help people know about Jesus and how much Jesus loves them. And that anywhere we are, Jesus is, and that can be our church if we need it to be our church. And as much as we look forward to getting back together as soon as we can in a big group, our churches are wonderful places to worship Jesus and to learn about, did I say house? I meant to say our house if I didn't. Our houses, maybe our room, maybe our basement, maybe our front yard, are wonderful places to learn about Jesus and to pray to Jesus and to worship Jesus. So please keep that in mind. And anytime you see the color purple, and you'll see it a lot if you watch Virch, um, up until we have Easter, you'll see purple a lot because Jesus was a kind of king and a kind of royalty that no one ever has been before and no one ever will be again. And Jesus wants to be king of our hearts. So let's have a prayer about that. And um, then I've included a song for you that maybe will help you remember about that too. And I look forward to seeing you again soon, whether it's on our blog here or whether it's in person. And you guys take good, good care of yourselves, okay? So I'll pray and you guys get ready to say amen, okay? But I'll pray and I'll leave a little, just a little moment in between things I say so you can think about it or you can repeat after me, whatever you want to do. Dear Jesus, Thank you for being a special king. Thank you for being God's son. Thank you for coming to earth and teaching us about your love and showing us your love. and asking us to show that love to other people. Thank you that you never leave us alone. You always want to be with us. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal. 
Thank you for people like Lydia who show us ways to be your servants and to tell other people about you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You guys, you have a wonderful week. Take care of yourselves out there. Look for some purple and remember Jesus. And remember that I love you too. He loves you better, but I love you the best I can, okay? And you guys take care of each other, right? Mwah.